Welcome back to part two of building a brand identity from scratch. So in part one, we looked at creating the logo from scratch, some of the client processes involved, and now it's time to jump into the illustrations. In this video, I'm gonna be covering my illustration style, how to create a pattern, and I'm also gonna be jumping into what we named the burgers. As always, if you've got any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna watch part three, make sure you hit the subscribe button. As you can see here, we've got the two logo designs. We've got the one on the right, which is the finished illustration version. And then we've got the one on the left, which we finished with last video. So what I'm gonna do now is show you my exact process to create this illustration effect, which you'll be able to replicate on your own designs or maybe some illustrations. I'll show you some other ones that we've got here. This is the file that we're working with. So as you can see down here, we've actually got four sketches that I've done on the iPad using Procreate. And then what we've done up here is we've turned them into vectors and used the illustration process, which I'm about to show you to give it this, this rough effect, which is what the client wanted when we were jumping into the introduction call. They wanted looking like it had been scribbled on a napkin. So I'm just gonna jump into the new artboard here. If you've not noticed already down here, I'm actually using the mirror feature on the iPad. Now this is a feature that you can do by literally just going to a window and then extend to Jack's iPad, it says here, it'll obviously say your name on yours. Now what this allows me to do, it allows me to have a bit more control over the scribbles that we've got here. However, when I first started out, I did actually use the mouse for this. So it's definitely not impossible, it just makes it a lot easier having the Apple Pencil and using the iPad. So we're gonna start off by organizing our layers. So over here, you can see the layers file. Now I've adjusted my layout. If you can't find your layers, then head to window and then go down to layers. You'll see it'll pop up on the side. So what we've got here is just one layer for absolutely everything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that. We're gonna create a new layer and we're going to call this one base. And then we're going to drag the current one up and we're gonna call this our outlines. And then above the base, we're going to add one which we're gonna add the color to. And then above the color, we're going to create one for shadows. And above the shadows, we're going to create one for the highlights. So let's start off first by creating the base. Now, what you're going to want to do is go over to the paintbrush tool and you're going to wanna click blob brush tool. Now, if we double click the brush, we're going to click the box merge only with selection and we're going to increase the smoothness slightly by one, and we're going to increase the size up to about, about 90, and then click OK. So the next thing now, I can see that I've got a stroke activated. I don't want a stroke, so I'm gonna flip that, and this is now gonna be a white paintbrush. We don't want that either. So we're going to click onto that, and we're going to put it to gray, and we're going to change it to 50%. Now we're just going to paint around here. I'm using the trackpad for this, so just to show you, how easy it actually is and you don't need a pencil for this. And what I'm gonna do is just fill in the entire background of the mouth. Now you might be thinking, why are we doing it gray to start with? And it's because we're going to be adding the highlights and shadows and without having a gray color in the background, we won't actually be able to see the highlights with it being a white background. So the next step is to go to our color layer and this is where we're actually going to add our color. So I'm just gonna import our color palette up here just so we have a reference to go to. And the next step is to go to our layers just to make sure that we're still on the right bit. Yep, so we're on color here. And we wanna make sure that when we click the blob tool, we're going to actually click keep selected on this one. And we're going to untick merge only with selection. Now keep selected, what's it going to do? It's going to keep it all in one piece just so that if we need to adapt it, it'll be a lot easier than having loads of different strokes over each bit. But we're gonna start with the back of the mouth here. So I'm gonna go for our darkest color by holding I on the keyboard and then clicking this up here and then selecting our blob tool I'm just going to draw over this back bit. As you can see, there's little bits missing here and there. So I'm just going to select the eraser tool now and I'm going to double click it, increase it a little bit in size. And we're just going to make sure we've got that color selected. Click the eraser tool and we're just going to erase the bits that we don't want. And then we're going to also add to this bit down here because we've not gone far enough. There we go, that's good enough. So now that you've seen that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and do the rest of it and then I'll come back once it's finished. Okay, so I've colored in the rest of it. Now going over to our layers, now you'll see that all of that is in the color. Let's have a look like what it looks like without the outlines. You can see it looks a bit of a mess, but obviously with the outlines then it looks fine. The next part now is to add the shadows and highlights. We're going to make sure that our layers section is actually on shadows. And then heading over to our brush setting, we're going to change the size to five and we're going to make the fidelity accurate. We also want to make sure that keep selected is unticked and merge only with selection is ticked. Now what this is going to do is create this overlapping sketch look that goes darker when you cross paths. So before we start, we're gonna actually head over to our transparency here. You can also go to a window and down to transparency if you can't see it on the side. And then you're going to change the normal blending mode to multiply and we're going to change the opacity to 30%. So we're going to imagine that a light source is coming down from here. So if the light source was coming down from there, that would mean that this area here would be light and then the bottom bits would be dark. And that would go for the rest of the mouth as well. So what I like to do is start by going under the lines that are already there, just creating a really, really rough sort of scribble. 
just to give a bit of a shadow to each line that would cause a shadow in real life. Now, this is just the first step. This is gonna be a really, really rough sort of scribble. Again, we want to give it that fun feel that someone's just drawn it on a napkin almost. So we're nearly done now, literally just going over all the bottom bits, just giving it a very, very, very small shadow, just in any places where you would imagine for it to be slightly darker than the rest. Cool, so the next step is to go a bit more aggressive with this one and go for our first layer. So I like to do quite big scribbles here and quite long and then i'd also like to go the opposite way as well just to create that overlapping effect so i'm just going to head and do this over all of these dark areas here that we've already noted as being dark and what you'll see at first it doesn't look like much but it all starts to come together especially when we add the highlights to the design so again just crossing over the paths in the opposite direction giving it that darker overlay feel. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the rest of the shadows and then I'll come back when it's time to do the highlights. So now happy with that, we're gonna to go to the highlight section of our layers. So we're gonna go back to layers, we're gonna close the shadows down and we're gonna to go to highlights. We're gonna to wanna to select a white brush this time rather than black and then over in our transparency section, rather than multiplier, we're going to have it as overlay. And we're gonna keep it as 30%. So the idea again here is to look at where the light's coming in. And again, we're gonna start by just going around the edges softly, not giving it them too aggressive ones yet, just showing exactly where we think the light's gonna come in from. Now, again, if you wanted to make these look more professional, you definitely could. This is by no means trying to look realistic. It's simply going with the style of it being a student brand and having that fun feel to the design. Okay, so now we've got our soft lines. We're gonna go for more aggressive ones overlapping them. And again, I like to just sort of give it like a zigzag sort of feel around here. And we're just going to go over these twice in the different directions. And this is going to create us some strong highlights around the mouth. We're also going to make sure to do the teeth here, even though you can't see it that well. We just don't want to forget about them in case we end up deciding to change them colors to a slightly darker light later on. I'd love to see if you do actually use this effect, how your designs have turned out. If you just send them over to me on Instagram at Jack Watson Designs, I'd be really, really interested to see how you've used it and also what projects that you've used it on. As you can see here, we've gone from having a really plain sort of boring mouth to quite a detailed rough sketch and the client absolutely loved this when I first showed it to them. So I can imagine they'll love yours as well if you're doing something similar. So if you remember in the last video, the client specifically asked us to name their four signature burgers. So I'm gonna show you now the menu that we've gone for and it looks great, honestly. So let's jump into this now. Here's the six pages. We've got the front, we've got the back, and then we've got the four pages in between with the four burgers. So let's just click view and we'll go to trim and we'll go through it one by one. So we're starting with the menu front here. We've got a mix of the different burgers and the mouth. I think this honestly looks great. This would really stand out to me at a restaurant. Let's jump into page two. So the first one we've gone for is Shape of Chew inspired by a cheering. It's a lighter, health conscious turkey burger with avocado, spinach and a light yogurt sauce nestled in a whole grain bun. As you can see, what we've gone for here is really showing the customer what the burger consists of in this fun napkin style sketch looking format. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. The next burger on the list is Thank You Next, inspired by Ariana Grande. Now this is a sassy chicken burger with spicy buffalo sauce, blue cheese crumbles, and it's presented in a toasted brioche bun. And you'll notice as well in the background, what I've actually done is I've combined lots of different burgers together, messed them about, flipped them around, and then put the mouths in between it, and then also put on a multiply effect change the opacity down to about 10% to so just give it a really cool background. So jumping into the next burger, we've actually got the Glastow Glory, which is inspired by the Glastonbury Festival in the UK, which is an absolutely iconic festival. And the reason why it's called Glastow Glory is because it's a festival inspired burger with a juicy beef patty, lettuce, melted cheese, bacon, and a tangy barbecue sauce crowned with a crispy onion ring and a toasted artesian bun. And then finally, we've got the dessert burger. Now, this is my favorite one by far. It's the Bohemian Raspberry. Very, very clever name, inspired by a queen. And it's a creative dessert burger featuring raspberries, a layer of white chocolate cheesecake, and it's sandwiched between two fluffy pancake buns. And then finally, we've got the last page, which is just a mix of absolutely all of them with the mouths as well. And I think this is just gonna create an amazing menu. The client's gonna love it. So now this takes us to the final part of today's video, which is how to create a brand pattern inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, as you can see here, I've actually already created the pattern. I'm going to show you how to make it. And this is actually always stored in your swatches when you make a pattern. So if I click the pattern, I'll remove the stroke. And then using the rectangle tool, I'm just going to draw out the pattern that we've created. Here's just loads of mouths with loads of fun illustration styles mixed in between. So to make that, what we're going to do is we're going to use our mouth here and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to rotate it slightly and we're going to put a few of them about. And then once we've allocated them, we're going to select them all duplicate them holding control F and then we're just going to shrink them down. 
a little bit smaller than the others. And then we're just going to make sure that these are actually all rotated in different angles. There we go. And then using the brush tool, we're going to change that to black. These again are going to match the illustrations, just going with these rough sketches, and then we're going to increase the width of all of these. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to hold shift down and I'm going to select them all. And then I'm just going to go over here to the stroke and I'm just going to increase that to about about five looks good. And then once we're happy with that, go and select it all, bring it to the middle, click group, go to object, down to pattern, and then we're going to click make. So I'm going to change the tile type to brick by row. Uh, you can mess around with this, you can change it to brick by column if you like as well. And then we're going to just make sure that our pattern looks fine. So I'm just going to adjust things here and we'll be able to see what it looks like as a complete pattern. So we just make sure that we don't have big gaps anywhere that we don't want. We don't want this to look perfect because obviously going with the style of the brand, we want it to have that rough look almost as it's been designed by students, obviously in line with their identity. So once we're happy with that, we're going to go up here and click done. And then over in our swatches, what we'll see is that now we'll have our pattern. There we go. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two new. If you did, then I'll be back next week with building a brand guidelines from scratch. So you definitely won't want to miss this. It's going to be the most value packed video that I've put on YouTube yet. As always, if you've got any questions at all, you can message me on Instagram at Jack Watson Designs or alternatively, you can whack them in the comments below. See you next week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button.